Recently, I put a little poll out on my screen. Recently, I put a poll out on my... Recently, I put a poll out on my community... P Recently, I... Recently, I just... I just recently put a poll up on my community page and asked what video you wanted next. Uh, it seems the majority of you want a convex sharpening video and that's what I'm going to attempt to do here. And let's get on with it. I can't stand intros. So getting tongue-tied from time to time does happen. What are you going to do? I hope you guys are having a super fantastic day wherever you are. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if it's your first time here. My name is Johnny. I'm an artist. I'm a musician. I like sharp things. I like taking him into the woods. But you guys know all of that stuff already. Little Jerry, what have you got to say for today? <coughs> oh, thank you. He's a plucky little rooster. We're going to talk about convex sharpening. I'm going to show you the methods that I use. Some of these you've seen on the internet already. Some of these um, work for me and some of them don't work for me. And I'll kind of go over them. You see a couple of wooden knives that I made here for letter opening. And yeah, they're kind of on the convex side as well. But I think we're going to take this into a, uh, a different dimension. We'll stay away from the wood sharpening today. So just kind of an overview here. What you're seeing is uh, two Falkneven. This is the um, F1 Pro. Love this knife as you, hey, easy there, easy. This guy will get to you in a minute. And the A1 Pro, or sorry, the S1 Pro. The A1 Pro right now is taking a break. I should probably actually work on this one. I took this one into the woods recently, so as you know, I'm unscripted, so I kind of like to just see what happens here. And we've got a homemade knife by me and another homemade knife by me. I made a whole lot of knives. Uh, this one is called the Badger, if you're wondering. And um, this one's kind of like a Scandivex. So it's definitely convex, but it's only convex from that point down. But I think I'm going to leave this one alone. Uh, here's another one that I actually did a full convex on. And this one is like a razor right now. And I'm almost afraid to actually work on it because I don't want to mess it up. But in order for me to demonstrate this video, maybe I will use this one. And uh, what I'm going to do is clear away everything here and just kind of bring in the sharpening methods. All right, let's get into it. This will be my last attempt at making this video. Oh, I'm recording. Yeah, I may as well fill you in while I'm doing this. This is my third attempt. Every time I've gone to uh, record, some calamity would rear its ugly head. So this will be my last attempt until uh, my frustration ends. And I'll just keep talking while I'm doing this. It's a black Sharpie. I'm covering about one millimeter, roughly, or a sixteenth of an inch on that convex. This is my most preferred method. I may as well tell you right up front. Sharp maker. I'm at 40 degrees. Sometimes I'm at 30. Depends on how I feel. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to take another angle here. And... See how close I am on remembering my angles. It's really difficult to do behind the camera, but just so you know, for all those YouTubers out there that have done this many times, um, kudos to you. So those of you that are yelling at the screen right now that I'm turning my convex into a, a flat V-grind, you couldn't be further from the truth. You would have to remove a ton of metal. And if you know the Sharp Maker, we're probably around a thousand uh, grit on these white stones, and I am not pushing hard. I am basically polishing it at best. Let's take a look at what that looks like. 
Let's bring it in nice and close. You can see how much, you see that shiny fine line? Hopefully we got the same amount on both sides or thereabouts. Okay, so seems I'm taking just a little bit more on this side, but not much. Not enough for me to worry about. Okay, a couple more passes, go nice and light. And just in case you're wondering, there is no magic to this. You do find the edge with time. You know when you've gone too far because it's really dull at that point. You've just blunted your, your nice convex apex. I'm really, really happy with that. I haven't stropped it yet, but let's just kind of, I don't know, let's see what it's like. It feels really sticky and it is really sharp. So the hairs are popping out like mad. I don't think I want to do any more than that. So in summary, black Sharpie, about a millimeter, sharp maker. I would say that's around, I don't know what degrees that is. This is a really thick blade. That's 3 16 So let's do a couple of strops on it as well. Get rid of that black felt pen. I put a little bit of black compound on the strop. So at the end of the day, is it more difficult? I would say no. In a lot of ways, it's easier because you, it's a little bit more forgiving in some ways. I'm rolling the knife. I'm not trying to be perfectly the same angle. Because this is like a full convex, I can afford to be flat and then kind of roll it back towards apex as I'm doing that. And the more you do it, the more you realize how forgiving it is. And you'll know if you've gone too far. What I mean by too far is, I mean, you've raised it up too high and you're blunting that edge. And in a case like this, um, when I was making this knife, I basically did this on heavy grit sandpaper to get the um, profiling done. So I'm just trying to get a little bit to that tip. You see the tip? And what I did was I ran the Sharpie the full length until all the marks started matching up or coming off. Let's try a couple more strops on this side. And very light pressure. And let's try that one more time. And let's pick this side here. See how they're kind of jumping out? So that's what they call hair popping. That is my preferred method. Now I'm going to bring you in on one more method. Okay, so this is the work sharp. You've seen me take this into the woods. I think I did a review on this a couple of years ago. This lives in my backpack. I've got the softer diamond here, the strop, and the fine ceramic. And basically all I'm doing is just that. I'm following the, uh, the angle the best I can and just doing this very lightly not taking off any metal, just really polishing the apex mostly. And of course, stropping. So when I'm in the field, I can always bring my convex back to hair popping if I need to. Most of the times I don't need to. This steel is 01 tool steel. I've got it hardened to about 58 and I don't have an issue with this maintaining an edge and that was my second preferred method and now I'll use that when I'm in the field 
And I've used it with some of the cheaper knives that I own with softer steels, and it works quite well. So one of the myths you need to come get over, I guess, then one of the things I'm trying to get across in this video is you don't have to worry about um, turning your convex into a V grind by doing any of these two methods because you really, really have to remove a, a ton of steel to make that happen. And basically those scratch marks that you're seeing there, that was me just trying to find my angles. And yeah, it's not pretty, but with stropping, you can bring it back to the finish that you had or better. So let's do a summary. All right, so in conclusion, the mouse pad and the sandpaper is probably something you want to avoid unless you're reprofiling or uh, making a knife. Uh, it's pretty aggressive. There's a very good likelihood that you're going to blunt your apex with the mouse pad and the sandpaper. So I would probably steer clear of that one. The strop method, right? Um, I don't think I showed that one because that was the video I was having the hardest time um, um, filming was 600 or 800 or 1000 grit on a strop, right? Bending it over and then taping it so it's nice and firm and then stropping it as well. That's another good method because it's not as soft as a mouse pad. But this method too, you have a very good chance of blunting your edge if you're not careful. So the sharp maker and the work sharp, pretty good. And don't be afraid of turning it into a V because you would have to remove a ton of steel to make that happen. And the likelihood in those two methods are slim to none. Um, the other takeaway is don't be afraid of a convex. Very strong edge, right? It's very, very strong, especially if you use it in the woods. Most of the knives that you see, like convex, the Falk Nevens, and the ones that I make are all convex or Scandi grind, or Scandi, Scandi Vex, I should say. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I hope there is something, some value in this video. Some people are scared of convexes. I think it's actually far more forgiving. And there's a ton of really good videos out there on the internet. So, anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye for now.